Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to, to show you Life of Fred. As you know, we do incorporate Life of Fred into our um, home education. We use it as supplements. My son uses it as a read aloud. So we're not using it like main curriculum, but you can say it's supplement type curriculum or additional resources that we integrate within our homeschool. But again, he uses it as a read aloud and we've incorporated it only because he enjoys the stories, guys. We've been doing this ever since the summer of third grade going into the fourth grade and he truly enjoys the storyline and he enjoys this Fred character. So let me show you the books that we have. So like I said, since we started in the third grade, my son was in... Um, public school full time in the third and fourth grade. And we began with this book, um, Honey. With this book, let me show you the table of contents. There's about 19 chapters in the elementary series. The stories are short. They not only hit on topics that the student may be learning or something they may have already learned, but they're also including topics that your student may have not learned, may not have learned, excuse me, in really creative ways. So as you can see, we started this in the third grade and you see some algebraic expression here. I'm also going to show you what a chapter looks like. Each chapter also includes some quick um, practice problems. My son did not have to do the, pra the practice problems when he um, started um, homeschool because we had a lot of other main curriculum and supplementary curriculum that we used and we were hitting math hard that I thought it was unnecessary for him to use Life of Fred for the purpose of doing examples. Again, we only did it for the reading. However, when my son was enrolled in school full time and we used the Life of Fred, we did use it for reading and we also used it to practice our math. Let me show you what I mean. So they would read this. My son read it on his own. Continued reading it, reading, reading, reading. And when he was in school full time, they were required to read for 20 to 30 minutes a night, we would use this book as part of our reading and he would have novels or other pieces of literature that he would read. So he ended up reading about an hour a day and he always surpassed whatever was what was being asked of him at school in terms of his overall reading goals. As you can see, after they're done reading, they give them a problem right here. It says, excuse me, right here, Please write out your answers. Don't just look at the questions and then look at the answers. Writing helps you remember, which is true. So in this case, when he was in school full time, he would actually have to do this along with the answers. And then the next page, he would check his answers to see if they were correct. We would do it together. But again, um, throughout the um, fifth grade, he didn't have to do that. He just read Okay, so that's what a chapter looks like. Let me show you another chapter. He would read. My son really got a kick out of this. Here's the problems. Your turn to play. And then they would have the answers. They start this series off with apples and it goes all the way through ice cream. I think ice cream or kidneys, let me see. Oh, through jelly beans. And then the kidney series um, starts off with kidneys. It's called the intermediate series and it's three parts and normally that would begin in the fifth or sixth grade. So we would have ice, this ice cream, same structure, 19 chapters, you have your reading, you have the practice, and you have the answers. Jelly beans. So we did this in the third, 
and these two in the fourth. Okay. When my son was in the fifth grade last year, 2018, 2019, we began our homeschool journey. We did these three um, in the fifth grade. It's intermediate series, so you can do this in the fifth or the sixth grade. And guys, you can do these in any grade you want, although they give you um, examples of orders in which you can take these depending on age or grade. You determine what's best for your kiddo, okay? So let me show you what the kidney intermediate series looks like. Here's the table of contents. Again, it will be 19 chapters. And let me show you this part here. It says how this book is organized. They all have this in it. So I'll let you read that. Okay. And they all follow this character named Fred. And I think he's like a five-year-old genius or something like that. So a lot of the stories are outlandish. They're, they're unrealistic. However, um, my son gets a kick out of it. Yours may, yours may not. It just depends. Okay. <laughs> so again, 19 chapters. And the intermediate series works the same way, okay, where you have your reading. Some of the material is pretty easy, um, but again, they introduce some concepts way beyond grade level. And then you have your practice here and answers on the back. Okay, so we did these three in the fifth grade. For the sixth grade, the 2019-2020 school year, we're going to do fractions, decimals, pre-algebra zero with physics. Let me show you fractions, and we're going to do something a little bit different um, in middle school in terms of life of Fred. We're going to actually do some of the practice within the book, and that will serve as his independent um studies for additional math practice, okay? Now, the fractions and decimals are really supposed to be used prior to your child taking pre-algebra. So what I could have done was, you know, completed the intermediate series, and I, you know, I should have jumped into fractions and decimals in the fifth grade, or at least in the summer, going into the sixth grade, um, but we didn't do that. I didn't think about it. So we're going to actually do these alongside our pre-algebra program. And then with this book here, the actual pre-algebra um, zero, they have a pre-algebra zero, they have a pre-algebra one, and a pre-algebra two for Life of Fred. One with, this is with physics, they have one with think chemistry and the other one with biology. Um, so yeah, they're actually incorporating the sciences with the math, which is really, really cool. Can you use this as main curriculum? That's totally up to you guys. I, because the way I like to do math, I don't feel comfortable in using Life of Fred as a core curriculum, but um, I am confident that using it as supplement or adding it to our core curriculum just strengthens the math skills in a fun, more interactive way. Again, because my son enjoys the stories. If your child does not enjoy reading, they don't enjoy word problems, they're not into this five-year-old genius called Fred that's you know moving along ed his educational journey as a professor, yes, a five-year-old genius professor, um, then, you know, it, it may not be of interest to your son or daughter. So let's look at the fractions. So here's fractions. Within these books here, the fractions and decimals, they have something called bridge. Let me allow you to read what bridge is all about. Please pause the video in order to read that.
Okay. And something called the final bridge. So what happens is after every five chapters, they have something called a bridge, which allows your child to practice what they were learning within those five chapters. You can call it a test, you can call it a quiz, it's okay. Within each bridge, they give your child five opportunities to pass in order to master what they've learned. So they get five tries. Let me explain what that means. So let's look at a chapter. Here is chapter one. Again, you have your story, you have examples. You're still going to do the practice here, just like the other books. And then you go on to the next chapter. So just like the other books, you have your reading, some examples, they give you practice, and then they give you the answers to the practice. After the fifth chapter, you have something called bridge. So let me go to the bridge. And basically they're taking the five chapters prior to the bridge and they are giving your child a test. You can use these as tests or you can use these as quizzes. Totally up to you. So at the end of the five chapters, we get to here. It says take out a piece of paper and pencil, turn to the next page, and let's do the practice. Let's do this test, this quiz, whatever you want to call it. And it gives you a goal at the top. The goal is to get nine or more right. They give you ten questions. You have to get at least nine correct in order to move on to the next chapter. So again, this is chapter one through five. They're giving them a quiz or a test on it. If they pass it, they can go to chapter six and do chapter six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then they'll have another bridge. If they don't pass this one here, then they have to go and do a next another try. You have to get at least nine right. If they don't get this test right, if they don't get at least nine right, they have to go to the next test. Again, you have to get nine right. If they still can't get nine right, then they're going to go to the fourth opportunity, the fourth try. If they still don't get nine right, they're going to go to the fifth and final try. Even if they made an error, that's still considered wrong because they should have double checked their work. So this is incentive for them to take their time, double check their work, and provide accurate answers. Because if they did something inaccurate, although they may know how to do it, but they just didn't double check and they gave you a wrong answer, they have to continue to the other to the next tries, okay? Once they get to the fifth try, hopefully they have passed at least nine and they can go to chapter six. If they still didn't get it right, it says here, if you got nine or 10 right, remember it's only 10 questions for each try, if you get nine or 10 right, turn to the next page and start chapter six. If not, please correct your errors and turn back four pages to the first try. Ah, So basically, if they don't get at least nine correct on that last try, they have to go back to try number one, figure out what's going on, what did what am I missing? What am I not learning? What did I what did I not comprehend? You as parent may want to do some corrective teaching and allow them to try again. But again, the whole point of get, getting them from opportunity 1, that first try to the last one is to correct a few things. Is to cause them to pay attention, double check their work, make sure things are accurate making sure they are focused, making sure they are using the, infer the the knowledge that they've gained through the chapters that they've read and did examples on to pass the quizzes and tests. If they're not passing after that fifth try, then you as parent may wanna sit down and figure out what's going on, but allow them to go through the first five themselves. They can go back to the chapters, chapter one through five in this example, to figure out what they've missed, but let them 
struggle and persevere through um, that type of method of learning. I like it. My son, once he gets into this, once he realizes he has to do that, he probably will hate it, but it will give him um, the opportunity to struggle, pay attention, focus because you know the material, you know how to do the work. My son's issue sometimes is going too fast, not writing the same answers, skipping steps, which may sometimes cause him to get something wrong. So this here is going to cause him to correct all those um, mistakes that he makes. Okay. So fractions and decimals and percents work the same way. Again, you want to do these two alongside a pre-algebra curriculum, or you may want to do it with the intermediate that I showed you earlier. You may want to do it with these and then jump into that in the fifth, sixth grade. We're doing pre-algebra pretty early. Normally pre-algebra is done in seventh or eighth grade. We're doing it in the sixth because I believe my son is prepared to do that. How long does it take to go through all these curriculum uh, or, or books, excuse me? For us, it took like three months to do a book. If it's 19 chapters and we're reading a chapter every two days as an example or every three days, it's going to take about three months to go through one book. Therefore, you can do three to four books in a year, depending on how long your school year is, unless you homeschool year round. These here, is it 19 chapters? Let me see how many chapters are in here. Oh, this one is 33 chapters along with the bridges. So one book can take you six months. Okay. So one book can take you six months and that's why it's probably going to take us the full year to do these two books here. But as we're doing these two books here, because my son already knows fractions and decimals and percents, this is this will serve as a refresher for him just to make sure he has a solid foundation in it. We're going to go ahead and do the pre-algebra zero alongside him doing these two books, okay? So we might do one chapter here, one chapter here, one chapter here in a week. So in a week, he has three chapters. He'll read one from here, one from here, one from here. Next week, he'll read one from here, one from here, one from here. That way, we'll get done with all three in a year. That's my goal. We'll see what happens. Hey, we might not even finish it. He, we might decide we want to, you know, leave it alone. And that's it. We'll just see what happens. With the pre-algebra, I think it works the same way with the bridges. Yes, it does. So with this one, you get a bridge after every five to six chapters, or it looks like six. So with the pre-algebra, you get it after the sixth chapter, but it works the same with the number of tries. And with this one, this has 40 lessons, 40 chapters. And again, you can do one chapter a week. You can do multiple chapters a week. It's just totally up to you and what other things you have going on in your home. But I just wanted to show you guys Life of Fred. We love it. We've been loving it since the third grade. Will I incorporate this with my little ones, toddler, infant, once they get into like kindergarten, first grade, starting with apples? Yes, I will probably get apples, which is the first book, butterflies, second book, see how they like it to determine if I want to get the pieces of this um, series that I don't have. But we're super excited. This can actually take you from kindergarten, first grade, all the way through pre-algebra. And they actually even have algebra one, two, geometry, physics, advanced math. It goes that far with Life of Fred. I hope this video was interesting. I hope you found something of value and benefit. Any questions for me, leave them in the comment box below. As always, guys, I really appreciate you. Share this video, thumb up this video, uh, subscribe, like, share, all that other good stuff. As always, be blessed, guys. Make it a great day. See ya.